At the end of this video, you will have a game scene set up like this as well as a state machine to manage the player. Let's get started. At first, we have our vanilla Godot project and the sprites that we will use throughout the video series. You can download these sprites from the link given below. I have just extracted these sprites into our game directory to save some time. As part of the setup, we will change our game's resolution to be 720p instead of whatever Godot provides as default. Next, we will provide two physics layer, one for our world like the trees, roads, etc. and one for our characters. With the setup done, let's start making our player which will be a character body 2D. Next, we will add an animated sprite node to it and add these sprites for when the player will be idling. Now you will see that our sprites are blurred. This is because we have to change our texture filter from linear to nearest. With this, our sprite should look proper now. Finally, we will add our walking sprites before moving on. Now we will add a collision shape 2D to do away with the warning sign next to the player. This collision shape will be used by the player to collide with the world, like walking on the ground, touching the walls, etc. etc. For this, the shape should be roughly around the size of the player. It is totally up to you. It will take probably quite a bit of tweaking to get it right, but for me, this is fine. Okay, with our basic layer done, let's move on to the level. To make the level, we will have to set up our tile map first. For this tile map, we'll make a tile set out of the level sprites that we downloaded at the start of the video. Then in our tile map, we'll make a physics layer with the layer properties set to world and the mass properties set to character. Then we'll paint this layer across these two columns of tiles. These will be the tiles that our player will stand upon. Then let us add a camera to the scene with the zoom level set to 3. It can be anything, but I like it at 3. Then let's add a player to the level. Now before painting the rest of the level with our tiles, we will have to first set up our visual layers. These are the layers on which our tiles will be drawn on. And it is primarily used to set up our foreground and background tiles. All in all, we will have 4 layers. One for our foreground. These will be the tiles that are drawn in the same visual layer as our player. Then a background layer for all the tiles behind our player. Thirdly, a prop layer for all the tiles above our player. And finally, a backdrop layer to fill the empty spaces in the level. With our layers now set, let's pick the foreground layer and paint the walkable area for the player to walk on. And then on the background layer, we'll put in the non-walkable areas like the buildings and the footpath. With this, our game now looks something like this. Of course, we can't do much, for that we will have to code in our player now. To quickly test our changes till now, we can attach the default character body 2 stick to our player and test the game with it. As you can see, everything works fine. However, we would not be moving forward with the script because if we were, this would not be much of a tutorial, would it? Instead, we would be using the concept called state machines. Stealing from my previous video of what a state machine is, state machine, a mathematical model that defines the behavior of a system to exist in a finite number of states and transition between set states based on a set number of input. Let's take an example. Suppose you have a vending machine, a machine that is currently waiting for you to give it some coin. Once you give it some money, it dispenses your item. Upon a collection of set item, the machine goes back into waiting for you you to give it some coins again. What we have here now is a finite state machine having two state. One, waiting for coin. Second, dispensing items with arrows to describe the transition between said state. And the reason why we are implementing state machine is because our player will have a huge number of states and coding all of them in just a single file is not for the faint of heart. I mean, think for yourself. Initially, we are idle. Oh, but when are we idle? When we are on ground. From idle, we can walk. But again, to walk, we need to be on ground. From both idle and walking, we can jump. Oh, but to jump, we also need to be on the ground. When we are on the air, we can move, but we cannot walk. And when our jump ends, we need to go back either on the walking state or our idle state, depending on if you are moving in the air or not. Then, we also need to factor in attacks. We can only attack when we are on the ground, especially in the idle or walking state. When our attack finishes, we need to go back to idling or walking. Oh, and we cannot jump while we're attacking. As you can see, this can become cumbersome pretty fast. And I've not even talked about half the states that the player can be in. So, state machine it is. If you're still not convinced by my explanation, I will leave a link in the description below containing more of the reasoning behind as to why I decided to go with state machine. Anyway, moving on, we will firstly code in our state class. This class will actually hold the code required to run any state the player can be in. 
by state i mean the walking state the idle state the jump state etc etc as we know godot has two process functions that run for each frame of your game to update the game status one for a physics that run at a constant 60 frames per second and the other for every other situation which runs for as many frames as possible per second so naturally we will be using these two functions in our state class thirdly another function to handle all our inputs from our keyboard and mouse next we will have two other functions called enter and exit and will run whenever we enter or exit our state respectively now they can have n number of use cases like running an animation at the start of the state like when we enter our idle state we want our idle animation to run etc etc speaking of entering or exiting a state to transition between states we will have our three body functions return a state as their return value this return value will be used by our state machine class to transition between other states how so in all three of these body functions inside our state machine class we will run the corresponding body function of our current state and save its return value inside our variable if this variable is not null we will change our state to this new one by running our current state exit function change our current state to this new one and then run its end function this is a basic pseudo code of our state and state machine classes now let's get into actual coding first we will code in our base state class as you can see, here are our enter and exit functions, as well as the three body functions that will return a state. Next is the state machine class. First, we will define the starting state. This will be the state that our character will be in at the start of the game. Then we define our current state variable and then the three body functions that will run the corresponding current state function and so its result that is a new state in other variable. When this variable is not null, we will change our state machine's current state to this one. And finally, we will initialize our state machine by running the change state function using the starting state as its parameter. This will make our current state to be our starting state. Initializing the character, we will then import the state machine into our player's node tree and then begin writing the player's code. The player's code is pretty simple. In it, we will run our three body functions inside Godot's actual process and input functions and then initialize our state machine inside our ready function. Now, we will write our player state class. This refers to the state that our player will be in and will inherit our base state class so that we are able to use all our state classes function here. The only thing different in our player state will be the reference to our player, which we will get by getting the reference to the first node in our player's group. Before moving to the last part of our video, that is writing our idle state, we will first make our animation player node and add in our idle sprites there from our animated sprite 2D to create an animation out of them called idle. Now we can start writing our idle state. This will be another class called player idle state and will inherit our player state class. The only thing we will write in this class for today will be to play the idle animation during its enter function. And with this, our coding is done. Add in the reference of our starting state to be the idle state. And here is the final result. Pretty cool, right? Hope you guys liked today's video. This is the first time I have done any tutorial. So uh, feel free to tell me how can I improve and whether should I continue with the part 2 of this series or not. Until then, bye-bye.